it's just me, you, and Craig this week. What the... <laughs> what's what's really weird is that the weird robotic voice that the Craig bot has, and I I keep listening to it, and I'm like, that does not sound like a bard at all. He doesn't sound nice. He just sounds now recording. Like oh it's... yeah, no he he sounds exactly like uh, the the AI from two thousand one, a space odyssey. You can't do that, Dave. I'm sorry, and, Dave. And you can't you can't be a bard with that voice. No, well, no, yeah, you're you're no, he can't be a bard with that voice. Ah, uh, poor guy. Well, maybe maybe he's a terrible bard. <laughs> he's he he's he has a ever. he has a very high charisma score, but his performance he's not he's actually not trained in performance. Somehow it's still a negative. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He, he, right, I, he's you? under he, he's under some hag's curse or whatever. Uh, I'm the grumpy dungeon master Jay. <laughs> hag's curse. Yeah. I'm grumpy dungeon master Christopher with uh, a very questionable voice today. Uh, I may die. We'll see what happens. Yeah, you'll be all right. We only have to do an hour's worth, and I could I I literally could fill up an hour's worth talking about Baldur's Gate three. Yeah, but we're not a video game review channel, and we don't uh, spoil it to people. Oh no, no, I will give. I don't you, care I, I, that you can have sex with a bear. I'm done with that. See that you've already given more spoilers than I was going to give, I, because I only was going to talk mechanics of the game, as, you know, as, as pertaining to D and D and what it is. Well, you could you could tell us is is the is the Baldur's Gate? How much does it follow? Like the five e construct versus the 5e feel of the game um well let, let me let me sort of dive into it and i'll get my l- little bit out of the way because i think you had a lot of stuff you wanted to talk about well um, either that, there's, answer my question uh well what was your question again i wasn't listening <laughs> how does how does Baldur gates feel in reference to how 5e operates and how it feels to play D D at a tabletop like we we played Divinity Original Sin uh, on our stream. We have the videos up on YouTube. And that feels very much like playing a game of D&D with my friends. But the, mecha- the, the mechanics and battle system are just totally not D&D. But it's it's close. The ra- Your range of doing things that you want to do is pretty much there. So how does that translate so, to Baldur's So Gate now, three? so take that, which you just explained, and for anyone who has not played Divinity Original Sin 2, especially in multiplayer, uh, go go do that, because it is, it's the most fun multiplayer RPG I've ever tried. Uh, this, it, it, it's effectively Divinity Original Sin 2, but now it's D&D. It feels like a D&D game, it has the mechanics of a D&D game. It has the spells. It has the classes, the race choices. Uh, every class has three archetypes that you can choose from. And it is absolutely fantastic. Um, I I would give this a 5 out of 5. If it's, a, if it's on a scale of 10, I'd give it a 10 out of 10. Like, this is... It is, in my opinion almost as good if not as good as dragon age origins to me and i played i beat dragon age origins five times so if you compare it to solasta which was would you oh this it's times? far it's far superior to solasta but you said solasta was basically like playing D 5e as yes. a video game solasta so which is, is which is better oh Baldur's gate 3 is absolutely better Okay. It's hands down. It is much better. Uh, Solasta, you know, Solasta is a great game, but it's done on a much much lower budget. Uh, you know, and and it feels like it. the The voice acting is kind of subpar. The writing is kind of subpar. Uh, but Solasta uses straight up, like I'd say, ninety five percent or more of D and D five E rules. Okay. Uh, now the difference is that Baldur's Gate 3 does not go that far. Uh, I would say it's probably 85 to 90% D&D 5e rules. Uh, some of the classes, like the archetypes, might have something that's a little different. Not much different, but a little different. Uh, some of the spells have been changed where it would, it, you know, like if you're playing 5e, 
uh, it might say concentration, and in the game it might just say until long rest. Uh, and it's not all of the spells; it's just a, some some of them have that going on. Uh, they have added in a few mechanics. Uh, if you are proficient in weapons, so it, say I pick up a short sword, and if I'm proficient in it, I get uh, maybe like an attack that could cause a bleed effect once every other round or something. Okay. So. Sorry, I had to cough. Okay. I was trying to fill it that time. You can cut that out then. No, I'll just leave it. I'm not no. I'm not editing for that. Uh, yes, you edit for that because it sounded weird. Oh, okay. Well, whatever. I'm still not going to. Anyway, uh, yeah, like uh, You're me and... You're about, about being a professional podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a professional podcaster. I don't make any money off this. So me and uh, our buddy Muffin played multiplayer for a couple hours the other night just to sort of get a feel for it and it so much felt like playing divinity when we were doing it um you know he he could run off one place uh and since it was just the two of us uh you can have a party of four so we each had like an npc that was with us but we could all run off in our own directions get into our own mischief uh, and in the, it is Larian Studios, which are the it's the same company that made uh, Divinity. So a lot of the feel from that is there too. Uh, a lot of the effects on the ground matter. So if you're standing in say water and somebody throws lightning, you might take extra damage. Uh, you know, grease spells obviously. If you fire bolt it, it catches on fire. All right. Uh, there's also a lot of other just random things out there, like uh, maybe you're in a battle and, oh, there's a post that you could attack that'll, you know, knock down a pillar or, you know, the roof on top of enemies, just like, you know, just like we used to do in Divinity. Okay. All right, well, we'll, we'll definitely be streaming it so people can tune in and, and watch that and see how it actually plays and watch how many times I punt Jay off a roof. <laughs> yeah, yeah, shove is an option. It is a it, it is an attack form. <laughs> I think one of the first streams I did was me playing Baldur's Gate uh, when it was still in early oh, access. You mean? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, all I did is just knock uh, the uh, mind controlled people off the Nautiloid at the very beginning of the game for like an <laughs> hour. It was the funniest thing that I could do. Yeah, uh, they have a throw command as well, so you can pick things up and throw them, which includes other people. <laughs> so when me and Muffin were playing, I picked up a uh, creature and threw it, you know, like threw it on the ground, which then pissed off the other creature uh, that was very similar to it nearby. Yeah, well, it sounds it sounds interesting enough, and I'm glad that it, they changed a lot because the early access was not like yeah, five E at yeah. all, and it, it disappointed yeah, it, me. Yeah. The early access was very, it was early, you know, they, they were still working on it. It was missing most of the classes. Um, as far as I can tell, it has every single primary class. There is no artificer, but all the primary classes are there. All of the primary Forgotten Realms races are there as options, including the variants of them. Did you say artificer? Mm-hmm. Oh, are, are we are, are we gonna go that that route? You just don't believe they exist? Is this what? No, it's artificer. Who the fuck calls it an artificer? Yeah, not artificer. It's an artificer. An artificer. You, we already know that you can't do language. Whatever. <laughs> <clears throat> so, um, in the more entertaining news. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I killed eight minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for giving me eight minutes to rest my voice. Um, I I was at Charleston Nerd Fest um, for Synergy on oh, Saturday. Oh, sorry, I thought you were going to be entertaining. No, I was at Charleston Nerd Fest for Zyn uh, with uh, Synergy, my, my local LGS. It's basically they're trying to start a convention, like a nerd convention here in Charleston. Uh, there um, should be one. It's there's enough people there. There's not. <sighs> There may be enough people here now in Charleston, South Carolina, to have a convention, but this place is definitely not a place that will that wants to host a nerd convention. You know, the general ambience and feel of this area just doesn't really support it. But 
things have been changing drastically. When I moved down here, there was one LGS. Um, they are now officially gone. They've moved to a new location. Um, but, you know, in the time I moved down here, we've had numerous ones pop up and some pretty major ones. Like I said, I work with Synergy Gamers, you know, for all my stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I got to talk with the DM uh, who runs another, like, board gaming store, but they also run D&D at that store called it. The store is called Hoodie Cat Gaming. Uh, we have a store called Owlbear Cafe now. That is like your normal like coffee and you know croissant store like like Starbucks and yeah you know, play board games and D and D there so like the nerd the nerd nerdness is kind of breaking into the world and um we were at a we were at that convention essentially or I was at the convention essentially this Saturday um I didn't get to do much but just you know run some D and D games I wasn't. A, the the convention was run out of brewery, all right? So to yeah. get to the room I was in, you had to go in, th- walk through the kitchen, <laughs> then walk past all the kegs, or not the kegs, but the giant vats that they brew beer in, all right? Walk past all the arcade games, and there's like this one little tiny room that wasn't, <laughs> the walls weren't finished, and that's where we uh, played our uh, D&D games. Um I'm glad it was in that room. I couldn't hear anything or couldn't see anything. I couldn't really do anything, but at least I could hear and understand people and, and talk to them and, and run games because the, all the other places they had games running was out on the main convention floor, right in front of a stage where there's these giant two towers of speakers that were just blaring stuff all, all day. So that would have been, that would have been a nightmare for me. You, but, can't, you can't run D and D in, in a thing like that. Yeah. They definitely need to have a bigger venue. Well, um, you, let's not rent a brewery. Rent rent a proper place for something well, like that. Last year, um, they rented a proper place, but it just was too small. Same problem. Um, this year, they the brewery is bigger than the other place, and but it was the same kind of problem. We we need they, they want they, they want to go bigger. So yeah, we'll, there's, we'll there's what happens a, next r- year. rent a convention center. <laughs> well, it's. You know, it's costly. And uh, it is, it is. And, and it's it's easier said than done. But anyways, it was a lot of fun. I got to talk to a lot of people playing D and D. Um I got to promote us quite a bit. Hopefully people are listening and watching. More listening, I guess. Um so I I ran Dread of the Ice Double twice. Um and the first game that I ran uh, I pretty much I had to shorten the game from the four hour session that I planned for the module. Um, so I ran kind of like a three hour variant of it where like kind of skipped the beginning fights in the town and stuff, you know, like a good DM does to kind of like mm-hmm. speed the story along. So they're they're kind of fighting just to the final dungeon. I had all the pre-made characters with me. They all had chosen a few. Um, they had some really good characters people brought as well. The first group. They that was the funnest group. I'll say that. Because boy was it entertaining. Um I'd like you to know that that, that, that your very favorite monster um took Crawl- someone out in first first round. A crawling claw? No, the, the little dude that stabs you and your brain explodes. Oh no, you mean the monster I hate absolutely the most. <laughs> You know the yeah. little ankle, the little ankle biting shit dwarf who stabs <laughs> people in the ankles. Yeah, so uh, he took out one person first round. Uh, I rolled a crit on the uh, on the psychic damage. Uh, <laughs> so he, I mean, he almost got me without rolling a crit. So yeah, that's true. Almost, um, not quite. Got close. So they were they were really just kind of like they bumbled into that first fight. Um, they were seen uh and just by some bad rolls they were seen and the doors went all invisible and then fought them back and they had some really bad strategies and positionings and basically took a huge beating yeah so in the most hilarious thing ever they decided to take a long rest after the first fight I mean, if you have to, if you've burned all your resources, you do what you've got to do. So not optimal. But. And I'm like, okay. I mean, 
I, I kind of like explained that like there's this magic going off after the first hour. So that's a short rest. You guys could just, you know, move on from here. And they're like, nah, we're going to take a long rest. So I'm like, okay. And I'm explaining this magic is, is happening. It's getting, you know, it's just ma- magical explosion and magical energy is just like flowing throughout this place. And it's getting more and more powerful and stronger and stronger. And it's getting faster and faster. Every hour they, they, they wait, it's just getting worse and worse. And then after the seventh hour, it stops. <laughs> so um, they're like, okay, cool. We're good. No, no problems. Yeah, nothing uh, to see here. <laughs> they go to, um, there. You can go left or right in the beginning of the dungeon. If you go right, there's some. I remember. That you can free. If you go left, there's a door that's locked. Well, you need to get the key from the bad guy at the end to unlock it. But there's always a chance that you can roll super high and unlock that door. And that's what they did. They rolled like a twenty-six on their lock picking check. All right. Some insane number for a level five, you know, very hard to get that. So the door unlocks and they get in and then they roll an investigation check while they're in there and they find a secret room that's in there. So they go into there and then oh, they're like, okay, no. oh, we're in no. a room that's full of snow. Oh, Here's no. a people. Hell. They look through the people and they see that all the Duragar are worshiping the ice devil that's now free. Okay. And the hammers and the, and, the, and the bearded devil are there. And while they're looking through the people, the frost beholder gets, you know, summons himself. Yeah. yeah. And I didn't like have the door slam shut. Like I wrote in the module. Um, I wanted them to run away, <laughs> you know, but they're like, Nope, we're going to stand here and fight. We're going to, we're going to hold our ground. All right, cool. Fine. Let's go out of blaze of gory. This is one shot. Let, let's see what happens. That's what you so, do. <laughs> um, the beholder was first in initiative. Oh no. Uh I picked the closest person to him and I had the person roll what I mean got fired. And they rolled snow disintegration. Of course they did. Um I hit and I did I reduced him to zero. He turned to a pile of snow. And then that's when everybody went, Okay, fuck it, we're out. <laughs> Fuck this shit, I'm out. So they start trying to run away. Um, but then the the rest of the, the the guys with the ice devil start chasing them out as well, too. One barbarian decides to sacrifice his life and fight the ice beholder by himself, and he was gonna win no matter what. He got he got close to bloody, I will say. He he, he had a couple good hits on it. It would have it would have gone down if he had any support, just any kind of other support. He would have he would have taken it out by himself. Yeah. Um but like the other guys were running away. The ice devil showed up. Um he walled off the the entrance to the the place with an ice wall so they couldn't escape and walked around and used his cone of cold and froze everybody and killed everybody. Another person that was still trying to run away got held by whole person and all the other cultists just walked up and started stabbing him. It was straight out of Game of Thrones is what I felt what it felt like. <laughs> and so six people for uh for an adventure written for four and they got all uh murdered horribly. I mean it's if you mess up, that's a tough module. It, yeah. it is. I mean things can go awry very quickly because there are multiple potentially deadly encounters in there. Uh, yeah. be- that that very first encounter, like you could lose somebody on that very first encounter. Uh, the snow beholder is obviously dangerous because it's a beholder. And then if they, you know, they, they didn't deal with the thing soon enough. So they had the frost devil as well, which are extremely dangerous. So it does sound so, like a lot. It sounds like a lot of it was bad strategy, <laughs> uh, but it, you know that's that's the whole point of the game like it is a strategy game when it comes to combat uh very very briefly going back on the Baldur's gate i found out that strategy matters a lot uh there was one encounter that i had earlier and mind you Baldur's gate is fucking hard if you do not plan accordingly and do things right i had one encounter and i just kept getting the shit kicked out of me and i was like man this has got to be an easier way so i ended up going a different direction 
coming in where the enemy on the other side of the enemies after re- reloading it put everybody into uh, sneak and then actually snuck up on them and got a surprise round which just completely trivialized the encounter so much easier hmm. so so in the in the case of these guys you know sneaking around and doing things you know, in a different manner you know, it would have been would have made that uh thing a little easier also probably not long resting might have helped too yeah the to me it was the long rest that kind of sealed it you know well if they um, if they were just fighting the beholder first and then go deal with the ice devil that might have been okay but having to deal with them both kind of at the same time you're you're just screwed <laughs> yeah uh the second group uh only had four people the second time and they took it very much more cautiously as they were sneaking in um they still had to deal with the, you know, the invisible Duragar, but mm-hmm. um, l- luckily for them, the, the little sneaky dwarf only was able to wound severely <laughs> one person. And I wasn't, I didn't use him to the, the full extent of being malicious with him because yeah. one thing to do with the, with the, with the mind master is after I stab somebody and take them down, I love to go invisible the next round. And then, uh, basically, prep an action. <laughs> prep no prep an action for when the person gets healed to stab them again. Oh sure, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I didn't do that this time, uh, but it was still it was still pre- pretty rough. Uh, what well, what was hilarious was is I was using the the legacy, um, mind master, which I believe has like a, a change in his abilities, where he basically makes someone do a wisdom saving throw. And if they fail, they make a random attack on a nearby adjacent ally or adjacent creature. Yeah. And so I did that to the person that I had stabbed with him. And it's like, oh, the barbarian. Yeah, go ahead and hit that person. Oh, so no. <laughs> he turns around and he rolls and gets a crit and just, just <sighs> obliterates his own cleric. <laughs> I just I was like, wow, that worked out great. <laughs> Couldn't have planned that better. <clears throat> so. Yeah, that was that was that was that was hilarious. But they they were much more cautious. They, they took a short rest. They went to the prisoner side. Uh, they let the prisoners free. They started walking away. They're like, "Nope, you go back in here and chain them back up." It's like, "Nope, we don't want you alerting anybody." Um, and then they had the final encounter where they got to stop the ritual, and they kept shooting magic at the ritual. And you know, the, the sh- per the module, magic gets gets stopped by the ritual circle that they're in. And they didn't bother like trying to run up and like hit them. So okay. they basically dogpiled the the lead Duragar, murdered her as fast as they could, and they're like, "Okay, does the ritual circle go down?" I was like, "No." I mean, if she had any kind of concentration spell going on, I'm pretty sure the 104 damage you just did to her over the last round would have stopped it. Um, and then what? The barbarian just kind of walks up and is like. Bam! It kills one of the clerics. He's like, "Oh man, we just had to walk up and hit him. That's all we had to do. Just had to hit one of these mooks, one of these guys <laughs> that didn't matter. Not you know the assholes without name tags." Yep. Um, but it was it was a lot of fun. That they were successful. So I had one TPK and one success. So fifty percent. And and, and everyone had fun. Yes. So that that's really the. That's the I that's hope. the thing of it. Everybody, everybody has to have fun, yes. even the people who died, even the ones who lost their characters. <laughs> the best part was is that one of the one there was a couple at the uh, the first game. They were basically playing another game at the table, like next to me, and I kept turning around and watching the game and seeing how how it was going, <laughs> and seeing if it, anyone else would be successful. Um, were they so? So there were some other. There was another table running the dread of the There's, ice devil. Also, no, no, no. There was another table. He was running whatever he wanted. To oh, run. okay. He was running his stuff. I yeah. got it. Um, but yeah, it, overall it was it was a lot of fun. Um, and like I said, I by the time I got done with the game, I was I had an hour to get home and run the stream. So, oh, that's that, right. Yeah, yeah. I, I did. The, I then did the stream. And I've I've been really enjoying the little dungeon that um, I uh, I planned out for the group. It's 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 out of Keys of the Golden Vault. Um, it's a level three three module in in that book. So I had to basically increase it the difficulty a little bit. 
Um, I didn't change too much. I added a couple spell jammer monsters here and there, some aberrations, just kind of spice up the place and kind of double down on the whole, like, this is an evil dead house kind of thing, you know, where I have, they haven't found the room yet with all the, uh, the deer heads, but the second they do, they're all going to start laughing and, and cackling. So, but there's other things like, you know, they did set a bed on fire and the bed would scream at them. You know, there's something in uh It's in like Pee Wee's Playhouse. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Except Aww, violent. Too soon. Too soon. Yeah. Uh, one of my players doesn't know this yet, but uh I'll, I'll I'll say it here just because I I think it's funny. There is a uh like a a soot ghost in one in, in the chimney and if whenever you get adjacent to it, it tries to, you know, get you to give it stuff or he'll steal stuff from you. Well, during the combat that they were fighting some uh, gibbering mouthers, he ran into the kitchen and hid behind the the kitchen bench or like the kitchen table right next to where the, the chimney was. Mm-hmm. And uh, I had him give me a perception check and I rolled against sleight of hand and it stole something from him. <laughs> I had to ask him, like, what do you what do you have on your belt, man? He's like, oh, I have this, this, this and, and this. It's like, all right. He's like, should I be worried? I was like, no, you're you're fine. You're fine. Nothing to worry about. Just forget this ever happened. Yeah. And I know it's going to bite me in the ass because for as good as my group is doing with trying to be very careful with this thing, it's just, it's just chaos incarnate. So they're, they're pretty beat up and I'm kind of hoping that they just go out back to the camp and, you know, have a long rest. Cause I don't think that's really going to affect anything. Um, but, you know, it's, there's a lot of, the Spelljammer monsters really aren't that powerful. They don't hit that hard kind of thing, but they just, they got some things that like, you know, if you get reduced to zero hit points, you're just straight dead because it eats your brain kind of thing. Right. Or this monster becomes attached to you and then, you know, will sap all your hit points whenever it wants to and will make you walk away into the woods forever. Kind of thing, yeah. So they don't they don't spell, spell they don't kill you through weird, brute force. It's got some they weird th- weird Cthulhu shit going on. Yeah, they don't they kill you through brute force. They kill you through just like having you decide that you know I'm just gonna take a walk off a, a long walk off a short pier. That's the best idea. Yeah, let's go swimming in full plate armor. I love this plan. Exactly. <laughs> so it's it's it i i loved i love that encounter a lot a lot of the counters in in keys of the golden vault man have been really 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 good like all the all the writers should be commended uh for the work that they did it, they're all fantastic and i kind of want to break down some of the good ones when i finished playing them all mm-hmm. which i know might be a little too late you know for like a, a book review but really like so far there hasn't been a bad one there hasn't been a bad module yet you know, Good. so I highly suggest Keys to the Golden Vault. They're all like little one shot. It's the compilation book, but they're all fantastic. Yeah. So, so. for for people who run modules, might cons- yeah, you might want to pick it up. Sounds like it's pretty good. Yeah. For those so, of you who run modules. <laughs> for those of you who run modules, which is pretty much everybody. Oh, uh, it's not even close to everybody. It's not even close. Everybody. I would. I, 90, I know. I know it's not actually possible, but I would really be interested to see a breakdown of, you know, do you run, do you run modules? Do uh, uh, do you not run modules? Do you only run homebrew? Do you run a mix of both? I, I would be kind of interested to see actual. I think. The, I think the answer will be heavily skewed to a mix of both because I don't think you yeah. do it otherwise. Probably so. Like I, I'm, I know I'm in the minority of almost pretty much never running modules. I'm quite aware of that. I think it's probably a mix of both. I mean, those are professional writers that spend hours working on crafting the most perfect module for you, and then Blizzard's just kind of like edits it all away and puts in a bunch <laughs> of veterans. Yeah. So. So, that's yeah, my, let, let, that's, yeah, let, that's let, my that, segue into the other thing. Yeah, the, <laughs> the, the wizard thing that we wanted to talk about that's Oh man. Okay, so I'll I'll let you you do it. you you probably have all the stuff pulled up on it. So I do. 
so you can find all the all these links in our podcast chat on our discord um but essentially um people on reddit as they tend to do um started stating that number of the artworks in big b's glory of the giants is all ai generated um so people started kind of opening up and looking at all the particular pieces and they they were trying to find out what exactly would be what was ai generated or not now the book isn't out until august 15th um but it's currently online on D D beyond so that's what, what people were looking at um so in particular there is I believe three art pieces that they're really upset about. Let's see if we can find the names here real quick. Or yeah, or if you can throw the page numbers that they're on. Uh, but, there's hey, no I, page numbers yet. We don't know what pages they're on. Oh, right. okay. Well, I, I figured, I figured it had a PDF or something. But well, it's it's a P, it, it's no. When, everything on D and D Beyond is is set up in the uh, you know, in their kind of like how the book breaks down. So there's no pages yeah. or anything. I, either way, you can still see the art in the uh, Gizmodo link on our uh, Discord podcast chat. So you can see you can see one of them. Um, well, I, I see the three. Well, maybe it's I, I, it might be one piece, but three different giants in it. With the yeah, wolf. that's no, it's not all three of those. Let me see if I can. OK, so it's the Alistair, the Rhyme Hulk, the stalker from uh, of Baphomet. Um, the Frost Giant and Frostmourne. Um, those are the three in particular that, or sorry, those are like f- the five in particular that people are are complaining about. So, the the Rhyme Hulk, um, looks kind of is the one that people really have focused on because when you look at that photo, the actual like monster itself looks like a giant covered in, in ice shards and he looks okay until you get down to his feet and then his feet look completely ai generated and then there's this archer hold on that my, had... my, my quote on that one specifically was that foot looks like rob liefeld drew it there's a couple of those but there's an archer like in the background that's holding a bow and he has 10 fingers on one hand and the bow doesn't have a string and the bow also goes through his wrist. It's very AI generated. Mm-hmm. Um, there's another one, the uh, Alistair, a lot of the tail aspects and how the monster looks. It kind of looks just like straight up. They went brontosaurus made of lava. And that's what it was. Um, and there's a couple others where like the weapons kind of have that like AI artifacting smudging to them where it, it's very abrupt looking yeah um with the frost shine in particular it looks like her feet are the ones that look like rob Rob liefeld built it uh its axe kind of bends in very oddly and it just has the kind of like shading that ai art tends to have so people kind of went through the artist list and initially no one was named as like the prime culprit until uh one particular person kind of spoke up who was um who did a lot of the dry drawings um their name is uh Isla Il- Ilya Sh- Ilya Ship uh Sh- yeah Skippen 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 yeah, Il- yeah. Ilya Skippen I think and they and this is in the the Gizmodo article um and they mentioned that they had a uh they basically drew out the artwork and had this initial sketch done and then use ai elements to enhance the drawing whatever that means like maybe they just uploaded it and say hey give it a give it a a pass or something and that's when you look at the gizmodo article and you see that frost giant with the horns and everything i think that's the frost morn um you can definitely tell that it goes from being this really kind of cool concept without any details to having a lot of weird details added to them. And the artist basically states that in a, through a different link, through a DM of somebody that somebody put up, the artist admitted that they use AI in their artwork to enhance pieces and finalize pieces because that's part of their creative process and um, a little bit about how I get the impression that they're trying to say that they don't get paid enough 
and they were under too tight of a deadline to sure. really. And I could believe I could absolutely believe that. Yeah, and I could I could absolutely believe that too. But when you have a product like this from a company, now you kind of expect it not to have any kind of AI work done at all. Now yeah. they haven't. Wizards hasn't come out and said that we have an anti AI policy like uh, Paizo has said and Cobalt Press has said. Um, I know I'm not against AI art. I used it for my my module, but then again, I'm a single creator. I'm not. I don't have the budget that they do, and like Wizards does to to, to pay artists. And I guarantee they're not being paid enough. I mean, I understand that. Yep. But that doesn't give you license to cheap out and submit a piece that's obviously pretty poor and call that a, a day's work. The the art is terrible. And then how did it get by the producer at Wizards to even publish that in the book? I, like, I'm going I, I'm going to be honest with you. Looking at this, the final piece, the one with the three giants, of which we know at least two of those giants had AI generation used in them. This art looks pretty much the equivalent of all of the D&D 5e art I've seen. You must have really bad eyes because... No, it, it, like... all, it all looks CG art. It Every bit of this art from 5e looks like it was made on a computer uh which so, is not which is not necessarily a bad thing uh but you know i i i'm older i grew up in the generation of actual artists sitting down with paint and making paintings which was then used in all of the D books right and that so, art looks very 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 different from all of the 5e stuff and me, it it might just it's not just me. It's generally my generation, older people. You know, it's it's a bit nostalgic, and to me, it just looks crisper and prettier. Than so the, the piece that's product. on the piece that's on Gizmodo is that's three those three giants side by side. That's that's an image they made for Gizmodo. Okay. Uh, well, the, I know the giant on the right is the one that had the messed up foot, and the one on the left is the one that yeah. they specifically show was AI generated in the right. Article. But they they stacked them up in a way that some of the artifacting of the the Frostborn giant isn't there, but you can definitely tell on the right giant, the, the Frost giant that they have on the right. Yeah, but the I can look. At, I, I can look at that piece and I can tell you nobody used actual paint to make that. I like mean. It, that's true because no one, no one does that anymore. They use the paintbrush right. tool in Photoshop, right? Which has never looked as good to me. And right, this but that's is, this is opinion. my opinion. Mean that this it's is, bad. Oh, no, no, no. I, and I'm not saying it's bad. I am just pointing out this is my opinion. But regardless, okay, you can definitely tell that something's wrong with these giants and how they're drawn. Like, I look at the axe from the Frost Giant, and I'm like, that looks weird. Which it one's doesn't the Frost look... Giant? Well, there's two Frost Giants. I see there's three. Frost... <laughs> no, one's an aquatic giant. He's definitely from the water. He looks like they're all, they're, they're all blue. Does it... I mean, that doesn't mean anything. There, giants can be blue. Cloud giants are blue. Frost giants are blue. Aqua okay, they're, giants they're, are blue. They're all blue. Blueberry giants are blue. They're all blue. Giants there's a winter. Blue. There's a winter wolf standing with them. There's snowy mountains behind them. That's what I told you. It's like Gizmodo made this thing. They just took three giants and cropped them out and stacked them on top of each other. That, that, yeah, but I'm just saying. With, I'm only looking at this one piece currently. I can't. So they the, all look, the far all left giants. one is called Frostborn. Uh, the middle one is some kind of aquatic giant, and the right on the one on the right's like the frost death stalker or whatever it is. All right. Okay. The one's an undead giant. One is an aquatic giant. One is a frost giant. There's an undead Wolves. in there. That's the frost. Yes, the one on the far left that we're talking about, the frostmorn, is a giant lich. Uh, give it like glowing red eyes or something. 
that's the Shattermore rules, man. That that doesn't apply to everything. That's it's been around. It's not a rule, but it's been let's around just have for a long emeralds time. in their eyes, man. Why would they glow red? Anyway, no, that's demi liches that have the emeralds, by the way. Yeah, but they all become an emerald. So, anyways, <laughs> uh, Ilya um, was very vocal about this on on social media, stating that they used a, uh, AIs. They also basically started their own NFT. He. <laughs> Yeah, he he did. They? No, well, he, I don't it, know. It, no, they they actually say it's a he. Okay, whatever. Um, but I guess I guess from the end of this the end of this article, they state that all the AI arts are going to be reworked and before the re-release. Whatever that means, I don't know. Going back to my question before we started ranting about using real paint. Um, right. how did Make- the wizard? How did, the, how did the how did the guy at Wizards who's in charge of approving these drawings not catch this? Like I can understand because it all looks the same. It doesn't all look the same. I, I look ju- at those. I, I just covered I, this. <laughs> I can look at all three of those giants, okay, and the one that has the the frost giant that has all the weird distortion very clearly is AI generated. Okay. Which one has the, frost, the weird distortion? They cut it off in the cropping. Uh, the one on the right, they had the messed up foot. Yes. Okay. Okay. The frost. The, mes- the messed up, the messed up foot was messed up. Right. The frost mourn one, she has a lot of wavy lines and flowy smoke and shit on her and stuff like that. Um, you can tell there's some AI generating like texturing on like the chest area. And a little bit with the hair, but that's that's hard to catch. I can see that, and I'm fine with that. If AI just does that, that's cool. I have no problems with the the Frostmourne giant. And if any was used on the middle giant, okay, it looks okay. None of these pieces, I think, were generated 100% with AI art. I think they were all used to enhance or, you know, modify them a little bit. Yeah. Some of them look terrible. The Allosaurus looks absolutely terrible. That looks like it's straight out of AI art. Uh, the Rhyme Hulk with the archer with the both of the wrist looks terrible. Um, and the uh, other one, the uh, the Stalker of Bapomet, doesn't look like anyone drew that at all. That's straight out of... I went to starry.ai and generated a piece of art. So the, the Giants and the conversation with the Giants are a little different, but again, going to the the conversation again this is all linked on our yeah you know, podcast chat channel um so you can kind of see what we were talking about some of it's okay some of it's terrible and i want people to use the the tools that pop out correctly so like ai is built into photoshop now so you can take a photo and you can erase part of the photo and then have photoshop generate you know, a, a, a missing piece of image for what you erased. And it's supposed to be used for like, hey, I want to add a pool to the background. So you erase some of the background and say, add a pool. And it will throw in a pool and match the art style and everything. Like, I can understand some of that to kind of help out. Creating a sketch drawing and uploading it to an AI and having the AI finish it. You know, that's probably going to become the norm within the next, you know, decade or so. And I, I, I'm fine with that. Um, I don't mind that it, that it's used for creating, you know, cool NPCs and stuff at the at the drop of a hat. Like, I would do that. I'm fine with that. But I think that if you're you're publishing books and you're you want to have like this is this is all made by you know human hands and has all been looked and verified and edited and and reworked and has that human element to it. You can't have AI in that work at all. You know, if you do, then you have to state why, you know? I mean, you could you could have AI created a bunch of random tables for you, okay? So, I want 100 random tables about 100 random things, and it will give you 100 random tables about 100 random things. But that doesn't mean anything unless you put the context around it. But even if you put the context around it, is that going to be better than like the new uh, Game Master's book with 100 loot tables? So one one of the things these artists have to be very, very cautious of 
with utilizing AI is putting themselves out of a job. Because like currently we are going, we're dealing with the writer and actor strike uh, because yeah. because of the the wanting to use AI going forward, and you know you got the screenwriters guild and SAG and everybody uh, rioting or it's not definitely rioting, part, sorry, it's definitely part of it, yeah, yeah. That that is a large portion of it because they see the writing on the wall going forward, and well, if. If these that, are, they're not getting paid with syndication, but yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's there's a lot of things going on to it, but that is going to be, you know, it is all tied together, and they're doing that because they they see the writing on the wall going forward. So they're trying to cut it off at the knees before it gets there. If artists that work for Watsi or any of these major companies or marketing or literally anything. If you start using AI this early in the process, because I don't think there's an artist guild out there, if you start just letting AI dictate that's how art is going to be done going forward, all of these companies will not have a use for you anymore. They will cut costs even more and just hire some AI, you know, uh, an AI expert to do all of their stuff yeah so you know it might it it may end up just being a scenario like it or not where all these artists just have to learn ai or learn how to use ai very well to continue working in that field yeah i mean that's what they had to do with photoshop and you hate it i do hate it yes um i i (laughs) i understand that uh yeah i I want things to be made by people. I, 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 I have respect for people who do CG art, but it never looks right to me. You know, and that's that's because I'm old. It's because I grew up seeing different art. Uh, I understand that. So going forward, if AI is going to do a similar t- type of transition and make it look funky. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know. I would just not be using AI to do art if you want to continue being artists. Uh, now, all of that being said, I, I you also had put out another link where Watsi had come back and said that they were going to maybe take a look at this and you know possibly make changes so that they're not That's- using AI. In the Gizmodo article, Wizard stated that they're going to... Oh, okay, so it was just um, down in this article. Yeah. Uh, and there is an official statement from Oh, Wizard there it is, yeah. yeah. Wizards has said on... that, they, that they will X. update their... Yeah, that they posted on Twitter. Wizards has said that they will update their guidelines to more explicit, explicitly prevent these sorts of in- incidents from happening in the future. Uh yeah, yeah, the we, actual statement says, Today we became aware that an artist used AI to create artwork for the upcoming book, Bigby Presents Glory the Giants. We have worked with this artist since 2014, and he's put years of work into books we all love. While we weren't made aware of the artist's choice to use AI in the creation process for these commissioned pieces, we have discussed with him, and he will not use AI for Wizard's work moving forward. We are revising our process and updating our artist guidelines and make clear that artists must refrain from using AI art generation as part of their art creation process for developing D&D art. Yeah. And, I mean, that's that's the way I think it should go. I mean, I'm yeah. glad they actually made a statement, but... Yeah, P- Paizo I, already has that rule in place and have for a right. little bit. Like, they, but like, they saw it ahead of time. I, I, don't, I don't think that they... I don't think AI should be basically said, okay, you can't use AI at all. Like I, I am fine. Like, you know, here's kind of like my line. I wanted a cat in front of a pyramid. Okay. Um, I was under a tight deadline. It's my own personal thing. There's no rule against posting AI art on DMs guild. Um, outside of you can't plush, you can't publish AI art, individual pieces for sale, but it's okay to have an AI art within a work. Um, I use the free images that Dean, that DMs guilds provide, but I wanted a special cover for my art thing. I wanted to mess with AI art. So I said, I wanted an orange tabby in front of a bunch of pyramids with two guys on chairs in the far back. 
that was going to be us. When it when it generated the piece, it didn't put the two guys in the back. It put two pyramids in the back and this really cool looking uh, orange tabby in like this like Egyptian armor. It was really cool. I loved it. I thought it was great. Honestly, I have no problems with that cover at all. Okay. Um, so let but there me... are there are some parts that are AI generated. Now, if I was going to publish this IRL, I would never use that in a real book. I, so I need, I would, I need to I, throw this out at well, you. Hold on. I would take I would take the that art. I would send it to Adam Schumpert and say, "Hey, this is a really cool idea for my cover for the book. Can you use this as a base and draw me something better?" And then he would knock it out of the park like he always does, and I would use what he gave me. Now, you have released how many modules at this point? 4. 4. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And how many of them did you get an artist to create something for your work? Well, it's going to be five. Let's just say five. I'm, I'm publishing one next month. So of the five that I've that are that are that have published or are going to publish, uh, and, uh, well, and, I, and I am saying okay. specifically how so many. So technically, so technically, of the five that I've put out, okay, there's everyone's been naughty, which is a piece from Adam Schumpert that he gave me. The, free license right. to use. That I okay. was bringing that up specifically that way because yeah, that one he gave um, me. Yeah, and then uh, Dread the Ice Devil was uh, drawn by our good friend Alex. At, mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna mispronounce her studio's name. Sure, sure, yeah, Sharibdis, I think C H A R Y B D I S Studios. She drew the Ice Devil in the block of ice. Fantastic work. It hangs up behind me. Um, Adam Schumpert also drew the first module, Tomb of Refurbishment. That's actually just a piece that I that I commissioned him to do for a group that a, that my DM friend did for us. I just was like, you know what? I don't have an art piece for this. This is nice, and threw it on there. Um, and then Alex also did Dread of the Ice Devil 2. She drew um, the Ice Devil Spear stuck in the snow with this huge mountain landscape in the back per my request. And it looks fantastic as well. So of all, of all the pieces that I've, I've that put out there, the only one that has any kind of AR is the, the second tournament module, which is, are you releasing that to the public for sale? No, it's pay what you want. So, well, okay. But it's up on the DMS guild. So it's yeah. act, it is a module that people can get access to. So why did yes. you opt not to pay an artist? I wanted to mess around with AI art, and that's what I came up with. Right. Uh, but, you know, I, 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 that's why I said I have to throw this out there at you. Because yeah. that, one, that one little incident, somebody didn't get paid. Right. Uh, so that but, is that is the kind of thing it, it don't okay if you did it then somebody else does it then somebody else does it and somebody else does it all these artists are out of work yeah but i will say if i wanted to publish if i wanted to publish that like in an actual like real book okay i mean the other I ones the other ones aren't real they don't have physical copies either no like and it's, just, this, the, this, and this, it's this, just the cover art that that is paid everything else is free art from from DMs Guild from Wizards of the Coast. So by that by that logic, all the art that I use that they've given me free license to use is also putting artists artists out of work. It's one thing if an artist says go ahead and use it because they they put their time in it and they made that decision. Mm -hmm. But when somebody just says here AI make this for me, there's nobody else making a decision. There's no chance for an artist to make money. There's no chance for an artist to get their art out there for people to see so that they can then make money. Right. Like, you know, AI is absolutely a job destroyer in this industry. I I don't think I don't think it's going to be. I don't It's it's either going to be they, they people aren't going to be able to create at the level they currently do. Um, I don't know if AI art's ever going to, I'm not going to say ever, probably not within our lifetime. Is AI art going to reach the point where you're going to be able to tell, not tell the difference between a one piece and another? I mean, like, I, I already can't. <laughs> so, well, 
I mean, that that's true. It, it's very hard sometimes to kind of like, is this ball of yarn real or not? I mean, the, the because... entire the, the entire Reddit thread took, I don't know how many hundreds or thousands of posts before Il- Ilya, she, Ilya finally stepped up and said, hey, I used AI for this. Because yeah. they, nobody was absolutely certain until that. You, you look at a couple of those people's, those couple of those pieces, not the one that Ilya did, but they're obviously very much just straight AI generated. Once again, I grew up with Rob they, Liefeld. They, like, is this, <laughs> there's some bad fucking artists out there that make a living. Right. I mean, the life, Liefeld's a, is a great example, but a bad example at the same time. Because, like, I, I have my I had my four year old daughter at the time draw me an owl, you know, and I'm using that as a cover art for a piece. Well, that's I didn't pay her. <laughs> yeah, you did. She gets food every day. But I I think it's a tool that's that's going to be used, and it's going to people are going to have to learn how to use it well, just like everything else. And there's going to be a lot of really good uses for AI in the future. Darth Vader is my favorite example currently, where they paid the artist, said, hey, we have your voice, and we're going to AI use your voice from now until the end of time. Infinity. Yeah. They're like, okay, well, you better pay me. They paid him, and <sighs> now his voice is now forever there to be used. And, um, yeah, I see a massive problem with that long I don't, because you have a character and you have a voice. To have anyone else do it would just be weird, Okay. Uh, but there's a couple other actors that have basically said, I'm fine with you AIing my voice for this character. You know, um, what's her face from Mandalorian, the, the redheaded. Well, no, she, she, um, uh, Katie Sackhoff, she said that she would consider it, uh, like she has not agreed. Oh, I to thought she actually it. agreed to it. No, no. Well, but anyways, Br- I know- Bruce Willis was another one though. They did with him as well. But like, I mean, these people are now just being preserved in different ways, you know, and that's 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 gonna happen. It's t- and, and that's I'm, what I'm, strike I'm, is I'm about. All, I'm always gonna fine. yeah, I'm always gonna stand by with that takes away future job opportunities for other people. Well, I, I will say this: as much as I love Darth Vader, I don't want a thousand majillion things of Darth Vader in the future. You just you're gonna burn them out. But when I see a Darth, when I see the Darth Vader 19, the Darth Vader ring in the movie theaters, when I'm 85 years old, I still, still want to have the Darth, right Darth Vader voice, you know? Yeah. I, I would, know. I would love for Mark Hamill to always be the Joker, but I understand that there's always going to be different ones of those, but I would still love for there to be an AI Mark Hamill Joker along with the AI Kevin Conroy Batman in the future. But I understand if the if the artists say no, that's that's fine. That's their prerogative on that. But it, it's gonna happen. I mean, like, I understand that there's a loss of jobs, and I I get that. But there's always gonna be. I think there's always you're always gonna be able to tell. I don't think it's ever gonna be perfect. It's, it's a it, it's not just a loss of jobs. It is a loss of creativity. Like hu- humans are. I never would have touched tabletop games dungeons and dragons if it wasn't for that amazing art oh and yeah I, I know the high school beholder yeah the beholder the high that high schooler drew that got two bucks i don't know which one you're talking about specifically. first edition well i didn't start All till the... second and second edition so oh when they actually had money so you were we're ignoring where all the the high school artists that drew all the original monsters it, for first ed. But you you have to. It, it is art that pulls people into these games. You know, you have to have art. You have to see these things to imagine these things. And yeah, yeah. I, and I think and I, I think, think now and for a while that if you have it, if they come up with a magic product and they start using AI art for all that stuff, they're going to tell and people are going to go like, you know, we're not going to buy this book. I bet you a lot of people <laughs> are not going to buy Bigby's because it has AI art in it, and that's you're gonna, fine. You're going to have like two people who don't buy it, buy it because of the AI art. I think you'll have a lot, like if no. because there's a serious degrade in the quality, at least at least now. Fifty years from now, you might not be able to tell. You know. Yeah. No. And nobody's be, nobody's going to care. It might be a different kind of artist then. Yeah, I don't you think know? we're I don't think we're to that point. Uh, like. 
people might people might revolt against Watsy for using it, but Watsy very quickly came out and said, "Hey, we didn't know this happened." So yeah, you know, they they were covering their butts on that one because they they learned from the OGL fiasco, uh, and simply I, I, be, simply because they covered their butts, people will continue to buy that book. Again, I go back to the point that there's there's definitely going to be a use for AI art. There's definitely going to be a place where it's going to be magnificent in, okay? Like the um, what uh, Corridor Studios has been doing with uh, or the Corridor Crew Studios has been doing with their AI art for their uh, their rock paper scissors anime. It looks fantastic, and they're perfecting it more and more every single day. To the point where it looks like it's just a straight anime, and then like I watch like the newest One Piece, where like they've brought in all these artists across all these different fields of anime styles and anime artworks and traditions, and they're bringing it all together for this massive fight for this massive epic event. And I think it looks like rubbish. You know, it, it's it art is always going to be subjective. You're going to find is. people that like it and people who don't. You know, there's always going to be touches that are going to be good. When it's shit, it's shit, okay? And we can call it out for being shit, but there's some times where, you know, it's going to be perfectly fine to use. If I can just take a giant and say, hey, give me, use this giant, but give it sunlight from this direction and put it, you know, give it a mountain range in the back, and AI can just generate that instantly, why not use that? I mean, I've already explained why not to use that. No, I'm. I know why you say that, but I'm saying why would artists not use that? If it's going to generate perfect mountains for you in the snap of a finger, then use it. I mean, because be upfront about it. There's no human creativity in that. Yes, there is, because you're still dictating the terms of the art, and it requires you no time to do that. It, there's that, that, no, that's, there's that's no stupid. physical labor. There, it's a matter of physical labor. Physical that's, labor that's... is creation. No, labor is not creation. Yeah, it, like I, I can just say, create something, and it creates it for me, and that required nothing on my part. You're forgetting the fact that you still have to know what commands to put in. You still have to have your eye and like look at it, and then you have to decide that that actually looks good, and then probably make modifications to that afterwards. There's still labor. You still have to draw the original thing. If the background's going to be AI generated, the background's just AI generated. There's still labor labor there. Your tools have just changed. By your same logic, using anything but paint on canvas. I mean, that is my is, preference, but no. That I, is your preference, but you can't say that that's the only thing that matters because they no, have to spend 100,000 hours on it when I could do the same thing in half the time in Photoshop. And do it in one-tenth of the time with AI. And then that's the, how it goes. Yep. Not a good look. Not a good future. But then you still have to be an artist to, to make that work. Like or, I said, somebody, I'm perfectly... or just somebody who knows how to use AI. I don't think that's going to work. I don't think that's going to work. There. I it's, think we're not we're not to that point yet, but it it will be. That is coming. Anyway, I think we've we've put, gone put around on your on this oil one hat. Uh, no, I, uh, every, everybody's going to have their opinion on this one. I am yeah. I am one hundred percent firmly against utilizing AI for art. Break out your chisels and your crushed up flowers, guys. We're making cave paintings. Yes. One hundred percent. How does a cave painting get shipped across the sea for distribution on a vast scale? You you have to chisel it off of the stone wall in the cave first. (laughs) If my book uses a printing press, I don't want to read it unless some monk has scribed it hand by hand into a into a a tome made by a sheep flesh that he himself has skinned and dried and flattened and made into paper. We're only well, going to be, I yeah, we're gonna be painting on ve- only on vellum going forward, only on sheepskin. You, you see why that's the, why the labor thing is dumb, then, right? No, no, I, I so, do not. Okay, so so okay. Quick comparison. If I write a book using Word, okay, the the, the program, okay. And it basically does grammar checking for me, does spell checking for me, but I still write a book, okay, and sell that book to people. 
is does does that book have more or less value to you than someone who had to use a typewriter make their own ink for that typewriter and like you know load up the ink and stuff and type everything out then read it and basically with a pen try to fix all the mistakes retype it up in the typewriter again for the second time how many hours did the person on the computer put into making that book it doesn't matter. They they put in less time than the typewriter. It's not a matter of less time. It's a matter of how much time. It's a matter of actually spending time so doing you, this stuff. So the technology just made the time less. So not then just, you go, not just like right now, it's AI is pretty new. So yeah, the amount of time, I mean, like Ilya Shipkin, he he spent a lot of time doing what he did. And I'm not going to fault him for that, you know, and then he finished it off with AI, which literally probably took him an hour or two. I don't, I don't know the exact time, but it wouldn't have taken him incredibly long to finish it off. Now, uh -huh. now think about a decade from now or two decades from now or the point mm -hmm. where we get to quantum computing, which honestly, everybody says is probably about 20 years. Mm -hmm. And once we have quantum computing, it's you'll be able to just say to make this thing and it will make it very quickly without much thought. And it will be able to figure out what you want. Like there's not going to be any time involved. I'm not, I'm not talking about time involved now. I'm talking time involved in the future. So I was going to say then later on, if I use dragon naturally speaking to record my voice and write the book for me, and now I'm even spending less time at the computer you, you typing can't, things up. It's not a matter of yeah, creating a book that's mm -hmm. going to be good, even if it's you just talking and it auto script, you know, script writing it or whatever, you still have to be able to format that book. You have to be able to tell that story. Art and so, art and writing are not the same thing. So if I then use AI to edit my book, correct the grammar. I, I don't have issues format, with that right? because that's that's a minor simplification. But you to write a book, yeah, but I, you were spending. Got, uh, but I just you know, got rid of a months. job, and the editor got fired because he's not needed because the AI can do the editing now. Eh, editors can find other work. There's not a creative process behind the editing. Okay, that's right. I just said that. You hate editors? Yep. That's a hot topic, but <laughs> No, I'm kidding. Uh, no, like I, I'm talking about creatives specifically. All it is is another tool that has to be learned and used to, to, to be better. By your logic, Photoshop should never be used. I mean, I, I would say, yeah, I'd be okay with that. But Right, yeah, that's but that's not going to happen. By your logic, anything that's animated with a computer should never be used. It's no, just no. line drawings, you know, like technology it's, progress is going to happen. Do we need to keep the creative element involved as much as possible? Absolutely. Fucking lutely. But it's going to evolve and it's going to change. Okay. The people at Quarter Crew that are developing their anime with AI technology has spent hundreds of if yeah. not thousands of hours developing that. We're, we're going to come back to this conversation in 20 years and see where things are at. Assuming well, I'll be you, on assuming... my hover bike <laughs> while you're still using a wheelchair because I will you be have to the... put in the hard labor of moving the wheels I will be the you're not really moving anywhere. While you're flying around in your Jetson car, I will be happy being out here in the country living a normal human life. But it's it's the same thing. You just... You get to you get to sit there on the ground. I get to fly around in space. It's it's still a normal human life. Just what's normal has changed. Ah, <sighs> anyway, you have any other topics? Because we could do yes, this AI I thing. Do, I do have two other topics. Well, we're not going to get to two others tonight unless they're well, within the next ten they're, minutes. They're tangentially related. It's about Gen Con. Oh. So. <laughs> yeah, okay. Let's let's do it. So, Gen Con is this massive RPG convention. I wish I should have gone this year. I want to talk to Ed Greenwood. I know our friend Randy went there. 
we have to go there some year. But two things stood out that aren't RPG related, which makes you go like, then what's the point of going to Gen Con if these things aren't these things are happening, but they're not RPG related. The first thing that happened was, is while they were setting up Gen Con, two criminals broke in and stole a pallet of trading card game cards from the convention floor and just walked away with it. Now, that's fantastic. <laughs> that these two guys just like walked in, stole $300,000 worth of gaming cards and walked out. They haven't said what exactly, what ex the exact cards were that were stolen, but they have pictures and and everything. So I'm hoping that it was Disney Lorcana because that's the <laughs> other thing. <laughs> right, yeah. So I know we talk about Magic the Gathering. We're not going to talk about Lorcana at all because it's not. Neither of us care. <laughs> well, I have to care because I showed my wife what Lorcana was. She was, she was like, oh my God, we're buying this. Disney Magic the Gathering, let's buy it. So the story essentially is is that while they're at Gen Con, they have all these people, thousands and thousands of people there. Um, the Disney Lorcana people set up a line to basically like you line up here, we will give you free product, and you can buy product from us that's Disney Lorcana related. And this is a product that's coming out later this month and at the beginning of next month. So everyone's really excited for it. Well, then the convention organizers dispersed that line completely and then let everyone everyone else amass at the doors for them to open up and say, this is where Lor Lorcana is going to be. So when they open up the doors, finally let people in to get the Disney Lorcana cards, they were on the wrong side of the convention hall. It was on the other side of the room because of this snafu with them dispersing everybody. So this mass of thousands and thousands of people rushed through the convention store to get to where the cards were that they could get for free and buy, <laughs> knocking over all these other stands along the way because this herd of people have to buy product from Disney. <laughs> it's just uh, so dumb. I thought like, you were trying to sell me on going to Gen Con. Right. Like, I live here in the middle of nowhere because I don't like things like that. I don't like the crush of people. <laughs> like I, I get, I. You can, you can, you can love a product, okay? You can love Magic the Gathering, you can love D and D, you can like Pathfinder or whatever, but don't get to the point where you're gonna have to stampede over a kid to get to your D and D book release because that you kid have was to in the it. way. <laughs> Just it. it it doesn't need to happen that way. No, it like, never I should get, happen that I way. Get, I get that you can you can get the, the Stitch 10-page portfolio for your cards that mean nothing in the grand scheme of your life. But in 20 but, years, it's going to be worth several hundred dollars because it was a giveaway at Gen Con. Listen, the AI-generated card art that they're using for the Disney Lorcata means that they're worthless. Sadly, that's not going to be the case. Uh, nope. Yeah, and don't give away PlayStation 5s in the middle of New York City either. <laughs> Somebody, some some YouTuber did that the same, like literally the day before the Gen Con thing. Yeah, and then he got arrested for it. Yeah, well, no, I, I don't know if he got arrested. I think the police just escorted him out for his own safety. That too. Yeah. Yeah, that, All right. they should have. They should have thought better of that. You you give away free merch uh, like that, and it's gonna happen. Oh, I know it will. Well, uh, maybe someday we'll make it to Gen Con. I will avoid any massive pileups like that. Hopefully, and I'd rather I need to, to get my Ed Greenwood pop. Actually, I'd probably buy that. I'd say rather go to go to Gary Con. You can probably get one there. Better chance of meeting him too. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. Smaller con. Less people. <laughs> yeah, I can get my voice to get thrown out again because I'm playing nine games of D&D &D in a day, single day. That's my goal. <laughs> I'm going to go to Gary Con. I'm going to wake up at six in the morning and just D&D &D till six the next morning. <laughs> yeah, but you wouldn't do a single game. Wouldn't be able to what? You wouldn't DM a single game. You'd be like, I'm no, here. No, no, I'm only there to I, play, man. I'm here to play and do nothing else. That yeah, you walk around and promote the podcast. I'm going to sit here and play. Yep. 
You know me so well. <laughs> you can hear my eyes rolling. All right. All right, done. Yep. Bye, Craig. Thanks for listening, Bye, guys. Craig.